there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome to the seventh installment of our Seasons at Oakfield Farm playthrough for FS19, uh, where this morning you find me inexplicably dumping power food into a random shed. Well, I say random shed, it's actually the shed where we have been storing the bales uh, since we purchased them in spring and there is method to my madness uh, because of course I have been down to the shop this morning after taking care of the cattle to pick up a couple of straw bales to use as bedding as I said I was going to do in the last episode. And uh, yeah, obviously we do not have a bale shredder and so obviously I am going to have to make use of our mixer wagon to shred the bales. And of course the hope is that by giving them a little bit of bedding uh, their condition will improve a little bit more quickly uh, following the issue I had with allowing the power food to run out yesterday. Uh, so yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out. Uh, so for the moment I have only purchased four bales and uh, we'll see how quickly we get through that but it should be enough for a while. Uh, so let's drop off the mixer wagon here and we're going to swing around and pick up a bale uh, that I have conveniently placed inside the pen. Uh, I was of course hoping that it would be accepted without shredding but uh, obviously that is not the case. Anyway, today is of course going to be a day which is going to be primarily concerned with making sure that the cattle do have enough uh, provisions for themselves because of course uh, it is the final day of spring and I have noticed that the weather is looking particularly good uh, both today and tomorrow and so I thought uh, with the grass being at the stage of growth it is that it would make sense to get out and start doing a little bit of mowing uh, ahead of the summer. Uh, perhaps we will get two or maybe even three cuts done. Uh, so yeah, uh, it does seem that the straw is going to be accepted here and we can see it filling in and let's just quickly check the uh, animal care thingamajig and uh, yeah, things are actually filling in and looking pretty good. Uh, so yeah, they have taken the entire bale of that and it does seem to suffice for the moment. Um, we may add in another bale as they require it. Um, what I'm going to do is get everything tidied away and uh, jump back to you when we are ready to get out onto the fields and start a little bit of mowing. And for the mowing I have decided to make use of the case because it is uh, ever so slightly more powerful than the John Deere I believe and uh, yeah a little bit of extra horsepower running these mowers uh, is not going to be a bad thing. At a yeah, relatively short journey out to the first field uh, which is literally behind the farmhouse. Uh, technically this is uh, one of the available sheep pastures on the map but uh, obviously we are not in the, mar in the business of of, uh, rearing sheep and uh, yeah so I have decided to make use of it as a field uh, for mowing uh, to feed our cattle. Uh, so let's just get this gate closed up out of the way because it does make uh, taking out the headlands just a little bit easier and we're going to get ourselves set up and probably take out uh, two headlands and uh, yeah we can jump into four times normal speed uh, because yeah I don't really feel like uh, time lapsing this entire sequence. Uh, so yeah, uh, the plan is to mow this field first and uh, yeah, I'm basically going to be testing out how Seasons handles hay. It is actually something that I haven't done since uh, Seasons released and Farming Simulator released. In fact, I've taken quite a break from Farming Simulator uh, over the past while. So essentially hay works differently uh, with the version of Seasons that we have for uh, FS19 and the grass needs to be allowed to dry by itself on the field uh, which actually makes a little bit more sense uh, rather than uh, coming out with the tether and uh, turning it instantly into hay. Uh, so the plan is to turn cut this field for hay and uh, make use of field number three for the silage bales and uh, yeah by cutting this first it's going to give it as much time as possible to dry out. And uh, yeah, it is also worth pointing out that uh, rain is forecast uh, potentially for some time tomorrow evening. So uh, yeah, hopefully this will be dry by the morning and we will be able to get 
bailed up and uh, carted off the field uh, because of course leaving hay bales outside will inevitably rot them. Uh, though I suppose uh, there could be a case to be made for uh, basically raking up and uh, wrapping them as silage bales if we cannot get the grass to dry quickly enough. Uh, though I do think that this particular version of Seasons, uh, really the grass does apparently dry out quite quickly so I think we should be fine. Anyway, uh, coming up to half ten in the morning, the first field is done and yeah we have, and we have of course given ourselves a, a pretty good fighting chance at getting this dry uh, rather quickly. Uh, it's going to have the hottest and driest part of the day. Uh, so yeah, we should see this hopefully dry out uh, before tomorrow. Uh, so just this tiny little bit left to go and then I am going to head across the road to field number three and uh, yeah we can start cutting that for silage and uh, yeah hopefully we will be able to wrap that this afternoon and jumping forward to the afternoon it is coming up to two o'clock and I have of course cut field number three in its entirety and also dragged out the windrower to uh, gather up the grass for baling and looking in onto the field on the right we can actually see that the hay has already started to uh, dry out um, so yeah, hopefully uh, it shouldn't actually take too much longer and if it's a case that it actually dries out this afternoon we may even get it bailed once we have the silage field done. And of course you can see me double checking the controls to try and get this baler set up because as I say it has been quite some time since I've played a farming simulator. But uh, yeah, it does seem as though things are going well and uh, yeah, that uh, wind roar really does make a great job of the field in gathering the grass up quite efficiently. And you can see already we are uh, finished making our first bale and uh, yeah, of course the wrapping does seem to start automatically. And I'm saying that as though I am surprised by it, which I actually am. And of course when wrapping grass bales, uh, uh, the bale wrapper uh, kicks in automatically and when we go to bale the hay field um, it is a case that the bale wrapper will be automatically disabled. Not entirely sure how a worker would handle this but um, yeah that is something I think I will have to test out at some point. Now of course there are challenges with um, baling on an incline like this especially with round bales and uh, yeah Perhaps a square baler would have been a slightly better option for us, but uh, yeah, we did end up purchasing the wrong baler because I did want to test it out. Uh, so yeah, it is a case that I think I'm going to be picking bales out of the hedge, and I do hope that the hedge at the bottom of this hill is actually going to be able to uh, stop them. Uh, I know for a fact that I can drive the tractor through, uh, but if memory serves, I think that bales will actually collide with the hedge. Uh, so there we have it, uh, second bale is out and I think what I'm going to do is jump forward in time a little bit to we are a little bit further through this field and I will of course check back with you if anything interesting happens between now and then. And yeah, because nothing of consequence really happened other than the fact that I determined the hedge does in fact stop the bales from rolling into the neighbouring fields. Uh, yeah, things have gone pretty well and we are uh, coming up on the last little bit of grass that needs to be picked up. Uh, so yeah, still haven't actually checked in on the hay field, but I think uh, once we get this uh, last couple of bales done, we will be uh, heading down that way and uh, get a look at what is happening there. Uh, so yeah, a tiny portion of a bale left in the machine, uh, but I think that is all the grass that we need to pick up off the field. Uh, so let's get the baler uh, ready for transport and yeah, I suppose we might as well actually have a look and see just how many bales we actually collected in that. Uh, so let's see, we will check our statistics here and let me see if I can remember where they are. Uh, da, 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 
uh, let's see, wrapped bales. We have uh, 30-something bales. Uh, the resolution, unfortunately, on my editor is a little bit too uh, low for me to be able to actually read that. But if memory serves, I think it's 37. Um, so yeah, having a look over at the hayfield, it does seem that it is just the headland that has dried at this stage. Um, so yeah, debatable as to whether or not it will be dry by this evening, or perhaps we will have to wait until tomorrow to bale it up. Uh, now, rather than leave the bales in the hedge, um, just in case something weird happens when I save and exit and then reload the game, I think what I'm going to do is pick up the auto loading trailer that uh, we purchased a couple of episodes ago and make use of it. it's a slightly cheaty slightly gamey slightly cheaty attributes uh, to pick up those bales uh, as quickly as possible i'm not entirely sure where i'm going to store them yet i may just end up dragging them back to the yard and tipping them into one of the silage pits because unfortunately that trailer doesn't actually have an auto unload function um which is a little bit strange but uh, yeah i think we can make it work nonetheless and, of course, it wouldn't be like me to leave pallets on a trailer uh, so that I have to spend time unloading it at the moment I need it the most. Uh, but yeah, I, basically I have left uh, some herbicide on the trailer and need to get it removed. And I decided I might as well stack it over here in the corner. And I'm sure at some stage I will forget that it is here and end up purchasing some more. So yeah, just going to get this unloaded and tipped over here somewhere. Uh, not sure. I may actually try to stack these one on top of the other. And there we go. A little bit of a wobble at the end. But uh, yeah, they have been stacked successfully. Uh, so let's try and not lift the roof off the house. And uh, yeah, I can basically get the John Deere parked out of the way. And we can head back up to the field and collect those silage bales and uh, find a suitable place to store them. And of course, once we take this trailer out of auto loading mode, there is an option to allow us to unload the bales to the trailer, which uh, basically enables physics on the bales and yeah, makes bringing this trailer down the hill uh, just a little bit trickier uh, than it otherwise would be because it is really rather heavy. Uh, so yeah, we have got 36 bales on it and uh, yeah, there wouldn't actually be room to put the final bale onto the trailer, uh, even if I did actually manage to find where it disappeared to. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go back into that field and try to locate that final bale at some point. Uh, so now, as for storing these, I think for the meantime, I am actually going to leave them on the trailer. And I think somewhere down here near the uh, feeding area for the cattle is probably the best option. I may end up tipping them into to that silage pit at some stage because as I say this trailer doesn't actually have an auto unload feature and though it does uh, seem to be able to tip up uh, so while I have been a little bit more pedantic about keeping things neat on the Ballymoon Castle playthrough which uh, for anyone following along I will be resuming at some point I do actually have some footage gathered uh, I just need to get a moment to edit it together um, so yeah while that series as I say is a little bit more pedantic and a little bit more uh, focused around keeping things neat uh, this series is of course more a case of me uh, you know exploring seasons and uh, figuring things out and yeah I'm a little bit more comfortable with uh, keeping things a little bit more relaxed and just kind of making my way through rather than trying to be overly pedantic about everything and right on cue just as I was uh, attempting to find something else to do for the rest of the episode it appears that the hayfield has a 
finally dried out and uh, so yeah I decided that I might as well get the wind roar out and uh, get this grass raked up or rather get this hay raked up and uh, yeah I think we might even start baling it this evening though I don't know that I'm going to actually take it off the field before uh, the night is out. Uh, so we can start up our wind roar and lower it down and uh, begin making our way around the field. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this wind roar really does make light work of gathering up this grass. Uh, it's got an impressive working width. And yeah, very, very satisfied that I purchased this uh, rather than one of the slightly narrower ones that I would be using, say, on Ballymoon Castle or something like that. So yeah, I'm going to make my way around and uh, gather up uh, the grass. And uh, once we have these windrows put together, we will grab the baler and uh, uh, come out here and uh, make some hay bales. And uh, hopefully uh, the baler will work as intended and not end up uh, wrapping these hay bales in plastic. And once we do get the baler out, it does uh, actually manage to automatically skip the wrapping with the hay bales, uh, as I actually knew it would, but uh, there's always a chance that these things uh, will not quite work as intended. And of course, because this field is also on an incline, uh, bales are going to end up rolling down the hill. And uh, yeah, it actually does in this case work in our favor because of course they are rolling ever so slightly closer to the main firm itself uh, so yeah I am actually getting into the rhythm of using this baler and uh, yeah it is still quite a nice evening and there is plenty of opportunity for some beauty shots uh, I actually do notice at long last that the uh, dirt on the tractor is actually starting to reflect the work that we're doing. Uh, I rem do remember this being a slightly more uh, intense effect before, uh, so it may be a case that that has been tweaked ever so slightly, uh, because I'm not seeing any grass appearing on the wheels, uh, just on the body of the tractor itself. And yeah, admittedly, uh, we probably should take this equipment and uh, give it a little bit of a wash once the day's work is actually done. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to tip along with this and uh, come back to you once we have got the final bailout and get a count on how much work we got done today. And so a little bit later on in the evening as the sun is starting to near the horizon, I finally get all of the bales made, including one extra silage bale uh, because of course the grass that was in the baler basically remained a grass bale and so the baler did end up wrapping it. And yeah, as as predicted, uh, most of the bales have made their way down the hill a little bit closer to the gate. Ah, uh, so yeah, time to uh, get this machine out of the field and start uh, tidying things up for the evening. Uh, before I do though, I would like to take a look at this signage bale and see uh, that it is uh, so many hours until such time as it is ready. Uh, unfortunately, as I say, the resolution on my editor is set relatively low at the moment, though I am sure you will be able to read that number off. And uh, yeah, just going to take a quick look at the cattle, uh, who seem to be doing pretty well, and I think uh, they may actually be okay until the morning. Um, so yeah, I think I am just going to leave them for the moment. Uh, so let's get the baler out of the field and we're going to store that up in one of the sheds. And with the usual scattering of machinery all over the yard and bales in the field, I think that that is where I am going to wrap it up for today and uh, call an end to this episode. And with that, I'm going to once again say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube and I will see you next time.